And everybody shouts. Amen. Amen. Let's open our Bibles into the Old Covenant. We're going to begin there. And we're going to go to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. Uh, the name of my, and, and chapter 16, chapter 16. The, the name of my message this morning is In Harmony with God. In Harmony with God. Now, tonight we do have a guest speaker, Brother Charles Sheehan is with us from India, and he'll be ministering tonight. He's a wonderful minister of the gospel. So if you can make it out tonight, I'd like to encourage you to do that at 7 o'clock. But I want to talk about being in harmony with God. Now, I'm not much of a musician. Uh, I, I have been learning uh, the guitar. I'm actually learning how to play the harp right now. And, um, but, you know, this instrument was designed and created for beautiful music. The only problem is it's out of tune. And if it's out of tune, it ain't too much out of tune. But if it's out of tune, no matter what you play on it, it's not going to be very beautiful. I want you to know that you and I are instruments. You and I are instruments of music. And the music that comes out of us is revealed in our daily living, our words, our actions, our thoughts. And we're playing a song. There's a song going on in our hearts and our minds and our lives. You know, there's all kinds of music today, isn't there? There's a lot of music that really is not worth listening to. There's a lot of music, and uh, there's a lot of twisted, perverted, sick music. When I, before I got born again, there were certain types of music I enjoyed and I listened to. And uh, it's not music that I would encourage anybody to listen to, but when I got born again, no one told me. I mean, the day I got born again, the day I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, I knew in my heart the music that I liked was wrong. And I literally gathered all of my, back in them days, they were records, and they had eight-track tapes. I gathered my Grateful Dead, Pink Floyd, Dr. Hook and the Medicine Band, on and on, and I broke them all. I got rid of them. Now, I was located on a military base, so there wasn't really much selection. The only thing I could find in the local store, the music store on the base, was a record by the singing nun. Uh, but eventually I was able to get some where I could get some music that would be compatible with the transformation in my heart. But before I got born again, I was singing certain songs, you might say, even in the natural. But when I got born again, I began to sing a new song because I had become a new creation. Now, once you're born again, you ought to be singing a new song. Now, it might be that in the physical, it's still the same instrument, but you have a different heart. It's like a computer, a different operating system. Now, I could try to tune this guitar with my own natural ears, and I have done it, and I tried it, and it doesn't work because my ears might not be hearing what the real note should be, whether it be a C or an F or a G. I might not have the right ability. Now, some people can do that. They, they, they have such precision in their hearing that they can literally tune it perfectly with their natural hearing, but most of us can't do that. So today they've got modern technology. They've got a little wonderful instrument here, and I just simply put it on the end, and I can turn that puppy on, and it will tell me when the C is perfectly tuned, or the G, or the F, or the D, or the A, or the A minor. I can go through this with this little wonderful equipment, piece of equipment, and it will tune it perfectly. So when I go to play a song on this guitar, if I know how to play it, it will be wonderful. Well, we don't have that convenience as believers, you might say, to know exactly how to be in harmony. You know, the most important thing, and, and I want to make this very, it's very, very simple, really. Christianity is very simple. And matter of fact, Paul called it the simplicity of Christ. 
And the simplicity of the gospel is this. To come into harmony, into oneness with God. That's your whole purpose. To be in harmony, to be in oneness, to be in tune with God. Now some people, you can call it different things, but it's the same thing. You could call it walking by faith or living in faith. Or you could call it walking in the Spirit. If you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Or you might say it this way. You will not be out of tune with God. How many ever had a, 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 a shifter on the floor of your car and you had a clutch and, 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 you, had, and you were so good that you, didn't even, you, could, you could speed shift without the clutch? Any of you ever do that? How many have you ever tried to shift and you heard the gears grinding? Because you weren't shifting or maybe your clutch wasn't working properly. It was not in sync. Now, it may sound like it's sharpening your gears, but it really isn't. It's destroying your gears. Well, you know, the, 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 the reality of the kingdom is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Or many, you can see it this way, as many are as in sync with God are the sons of God. Now, when God created uh, man, he created man in his, he said, let's make man our like likeness in our image. Man was in complete, perfect harmony with God. Complete, complete harmony. He was in sync with God. He was in tune with God. And God was playing an amazing song through him. You, you notice nature has such beautiful songs, you know, whether it be the birds or it be the, 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 the waves of the ocean or, uh, or, or the different things that God has created. You know, everything in creation is, is in, in his sync. You know, the rotation of the earth and, 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 and all the planets, everything is in such amazing harmony. Because if it gets out of harmony, if the earth ever gets out of its orbit, it will kill every human thing or living thing on this planet. See, that's why it says, be not deceived, God's not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, he will reap. He that sows to the flesh will reap corruption. He's talking to the church, but he that sows to the Spirit shall reap life everlasting. You may say it this way, that when you are in sync with God, matter of fact, the Bible says, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. They walk uprightly. They're, they're in sync with God. They're in harmony with God. They're in oneness with God. They they, 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 their, their mind is in harmony, their words are in harmony, their actions are in ham harmony, their deeds are in harmony, and that's where Adam was. And he, Adam, lived a sinless life, no sin. Because what is sin? Sin is when you're out of harmony with God. You're not in tune with God. You're not in step with God. When I was in the Navy, I, I, I joined a drill team. And this drill team, what we would do is we'd take our M16s and we had bayonets on it, and they began to teach us how to walk first in step. And then we would take our guns and we could kick them and throw them up in the air and they'd come back down and we'd all do it in sync and harmony. Well, I remember we went to uh, one time to March, and I was second lineup. I wasn't first lineup. I wasn't good enough. But the Drew team, we went to uh, the uh, Chicago Stadium, and uh, I forgot what, what's the baseball game. Baseball people in in Chicago, the Cubs. So we went, and there is this massive stadium filled, and so the team went out there, and they're out there, and they're doing it. They're all in sync and harmony. But the one guy, as he went to flip his gun, his gun let loose. And the bayonet went up, praise God, he just hit the helmet of the guy in front of him and knocked the helmet off. Now, if he'd just been down another inch, it would have gone through the back of his head. 
But that was tragic to some extent, but we had to be in harmony. I mean, when we kicked our guns, they went up in the air. We caught them. We twirled them around. I mean, we were, but it took a lot, a lot, a lot of practice to get it right. They say practice makes perfect. Now, you may not know it, but you got to practice a lot to get in harmony with God. There's a lot of practice involved in it. A righteous man may fall down seven. Now, I'm not talking about sinners. I'm talking about once you're born again, once you've accepted Jesus Christ. So Adam, God gives him a mate. He looks at her and he says, you are now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, and they were one. No, wait, how could they be one? They were two different individual people. No, they were one because they were in sync. They were in harmony. They were one. I mean, they even knew what they were going to say before they even said it. Have you ever been so much one with a group of people or with a person that you knew what they were even thinking. I mean, my wife and I have been married for 36 years, and there's sometimes we're thinking exactly the same, and we will just give each other the eye, and we know what we're thinking. You know what I'm saying? We're so much in harmony. So God created man to be one with him. Matter of fact, that's the last thing that Jesus prayed. And he let us in on his prayer in the Gospel of John chapter 17. It says, Father... May they be one with us, even as we are one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me. Now, isn't that amazing? Jesus said that our oneness with God would reveal to the world that Christ is the Messiah. Now, the enemy comes, the thief, the liar, the devil in a snake, and what did he really come to do? Really, what did the devil come to do? He came to get man out of tune with God, get us out of agreement with God. It says in Amos, if two be not agreed together, divorce happens, right? If you don't have agreement, if you don't agree there's going to be strife. And where there's strife and envy, there's hate and every evil work. So, yeah, but I'm a believer. It don't matter. If the devil can get you out of agreement. Now, first of all, there's a lot of things that we don't need to agree about. Hello? My wife likes to wear pink. That's wonderful. I'm never going to agree to wear pink. And for her to try to get me to wear pink would not be of God. And for me to try to get her, you know what I'm saying? There, see, but remember, the thief comes. Listen, you got to understand, we don't wrestle flesh and blood. See, the enemy showed up to get the man and the woman out of harmony with God and out of sync with each other. Now, first of all, God is the glue in the marriage. So, if you take God out of the picture, what are you going to have? You're not, you're not going to have much of a, you're going to have a marriage based on what? On feelings, emotions, circumstances, finances, right? But you know what really, my wife and I, what has really kept us together all these years is that we are, in, both of us are in absolute agreement that we love Jesus Christ. That, that's the only reason I really married my wife, was because of the fact she had a heart after God. That's why I married her. And I had a heart after God. Now, if I lose my heart after God and she loses her heart after God, I mean, man, we're in big, big trouble, okay? But now there's been times in our marriage where there was a lot of discontent, there was a lot of strife, there was a lot of bitterness, and hate came out of it, and vision came out of it, and divorce came, came out of it, but we both agreed with the scripture that to death do us part. See, this I showed you that little instrument that I had to tune that guitar. Well, listen, we have an instrument to tune our lives. It's called the Word of God. We have the mind of Christ. 
we have the mind of Christ. Now, Paul said an amazing thing because you understand, every, what people are teaching is correct. Christ has accomplished, fulfilled, completed everything that needs to be done. He overcame principalities and he powers and he made it show them openly triumphing over them in it. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We are seated in heavenly places. He has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He has, he, he has overcame principalities and powers. He has translated us into the kingdom of his dearly begotten son, the Father has. And, and so God has given us. We are heirs and joint heirs with Christ. Not only that, but the Bible says now that Christ lives in us. Hello? Christ is in us, the hope of glory, and that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. God lives in me. Say, God lives in me. If you're born again, Christ came into you. And then you got baptized in the Holy Ghost, the, the, the comforter, the one who leads and guides us. But if you really study uh, John 14, 15, 16, and 17, and Jesus begins to talk about, it is expedient for me that I depart, for if I do not depart, the Holy Ghost cannot come. What does the Holy Ghost come to do? He comes to bring us into harmony with God. He comes to bring us into sync with God. Um. We have a, a shower over here, and we have uh, uh, Joanna Hurden and her husband uh, staying with us. And he hasn't been able to get hot water out of, the, out of the shower, just cold water. So I finally had mercy. I said, okay, I'll look at it. I, I messed around with the pipes. I messed around with this. I couldn't find nothing wrong. I thought, okay, I'm going to take off that handle. So I took off the handle, and I found out there was a restraining pin that was in that shower. Now, I think they did it in order that they could be protected from a lawsuit if somebody spun it too far and they got scalded with hot water. So I took that pin out. Oh, he's so happy now. He's got all the hot water he wants. But there was something restraining the hot water from flowing through. Listen, if Christ is in me, if God is in me, if I've been blessed with all spiritual blessings, then how come we're not seeing the results that the Bible says? For he says, out of your belly, say my belly, will flow rivers of living water. What, what's going on? God, uh, God can't lie. He's not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said it? Will he not do it? Has he spoken it? Will he not make it good? What is the problem? If God isn't manifesting in me, if, if you don't hear Jesus in me, if you don't see Jesus in me, I'll even say this, if you don't feel Jesus in me, if you don't experience Jesus in me, is it because Jesus is not in me? No, that's not. What's going on? I'm not in harmony with God. I'm not in tune with God. And the devil's done everything. Did you notice that when the devil got the woman and the man to disagree with God or to get out of tune with God, they ran from God. Not only that, but then they turned on each other. Listen, if you're out of sync with God, there will be bitterness and strife and hate, argumentativity in your heart. You can blame your mate, you can blame society, you can blame people, but it's you. It's me. Because if I am walking in sync with God, I'll have peace and joy and righteousness. <laughs> Hello? See, if I'm tormented because I'm out of sync with God, I'll torment others. If you look at the early church, listen, even after they've been, they've been beat and whipped, and he was a Roman citizen, and they had no right to do that to Paul and Silas. They were in prison, but they never got out of harmony with God. They're still in sync with God. They're laying in the stocks, and at midnight, they're praying. And they're not praying prayers of self-pity. Poor me, woe with me, bawling and squalling like a newborn calf in a tin barn roof on a cold winter night. No, what are they doing? They're 
talking to the Father. They're actually thanking him for the opportunity they had to suffer for the Lord. Did you know that's how much in tune the early church was? That they rejoiced when they were persecuted. They rejoiced when they were treated wrong. They rejoiced when people did evil to them because of their love for Christ. They never got out of harmony. The instrument never got out of tune. They kept it tuned. How many, how many play instruments? Now, Instruments you got to tune. Don't you have to tune them constantly? Constantly tuning them. You get a new guitar and them strings got to be stretched. You got to tune it and tune it and tune it and tune it. Now, after a while, when those strings begin to get where they need to be, you don't have to tune it as often. It's the same thing spiritually. When you first get born again, man, you got to tune, 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 tune. But if you don't tune, it sounds worse and worse. You know, you can play an instrument out of tune and still know the song, recognize the song that's being played. But if that instrument gets so out of harmony and out of sync, you won't be able to even recognize the song that is being played. That's why so many sinners are confused. They say, well, I don't have to go to church with those hypocrites. Well, now, I know the devil's just going to tell people who don't know Christ we're all hypocrites. I understand this. But there's a lot of reality because they hear the music coming out of our boom box. And it's not very lovely. It's not very beautiful. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness. Huh? Self-control, it's not coming out of us. Now, we can, we can blame people we live with, but it's really us. See, Christ could be dropped in, and Christ is the expression of the Father's perfect will. See, Christ, and that's what it says in, in Hebrews, where Paul said, by the Spirit of God, he said, God, who at some dry times and in divers manners, spake unto the fathers by the prophets. Where was God spoke to the human race through the prophets of old, but have in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, which is the tuning instrument. This will always give me a perfect C, a perfect D, a perfect F, a perfect G. Now, it could go wrong, but Christ will never go wrong. But God has spoken unto us by his Son, whom he the appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, the brightness of his glory. That means he said, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. If you've heard me, you have heard the Father. He never sinned, or let's say it this way, he never got out of tune, not even once. Wow. See, and that's what Christ came to do. Christ came to bring us back in to tune or harmony into sync with him. See, that's, that Paul said, I'm afraid that's by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his supply Utility, so your minds, say my mind, should be corrupted from the simplicity of Christ. The simplicity in harmony with Christ. I'm going to walk in harmony with Christ. Pastor, I'm so tired of tuning my instrument. Well, there's things you can do with instruments that will keep them out of tune. You know, if you're taking an instrument out for, into the cold and into the heat, into the cold, into the heat, it'll go out of tune real quick. Matter of fact, you could wreck the instrument. Well, that Bible says, walk in the light as he is in the light. You'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So we got to tune our instruments. Now, Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? How? 
by the renewing of your mind. Over and over the Bible says to renew your mind. Put off the old, put on the new. Renew your mind. As a man thinketh, so is he. The harmony of the mind. You know, it says in Philippians, let this mind, let it be. Say, let it be. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Well, what does that mean? you got to, to come into harmony with God, you got to die to your flesh. You gotta die. You gotta die to whatever. First of all, as as a believer, when I first got born again, I got rid of all that music. You know why? I wasn't gonna play that old song again. Do you know those Israelites who kept on playing the old same old song and they died in the wilderness? This whining, crying, complaining, moaning, groping, fault finding. And they died in the wilderness of sin. All they had to do was change the song they were singing. You know, I think that's one reason why it says, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Stop singing the old woe with me song. Poor me song. Everybody's against me song. Nobody respects me song. Nobody cares about me. What about what I want? No, no, no. That instrument, really, I, in a natural, you might say, this is my guitar. This is my guitar. This guitar has to do what I want it to do. Now, thank God this guitar doesn't have its own will because it might fight me. It might not want to play that song or sing that song or go to that gig I want to take it to. And, 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 but it doesn't. It's dead. This guitar is a dead instrument, and yet it makes living, beautiful music if it's in the hands of the right person. I want to be like this guitar. I've got to be like this guitar. I've got to be a dead instrument in the hands of God and let him tune me. How? By the renewing of my mind that I may prove what is the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. I am totally convinced when Jesus said, the thief comes but to steal, to kill, and destroy. The context was the sheep following him. That was the whole context. John chapter 10, he talked about, I am the shepherd, you're the sheep, my sheep hear my voice, another does not follow. They follow him. Those sheep follow the shepherd, Jesus Christ, okay? So I need to, if you'll look at your life, every time you were in tune with God, every time you followed God, every time you did God's will, good things happen. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Them that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Well, let's say it this way. Those who are in tune with God, God will manifest himself through them. And actually, Jesus said, the Father seeks those who worship him in spirit and in truth. He's looking for those who say, Lord, I want to be in tune with you. I can't tune you up. If I did tune you up, you wouldn't be tuned right because I would be trying to tune you by my opinion and my feelings and my thoughts and, my, and the condition of my mind. Not my job to tune you. You tune yourself. If you begin to tune an instrument, you'll discover one thing about it. As you have that equipment on there, you got to tighten it, you got to loosen it. You got to tighten it, you got to loosen it. You got to tighten it, you got to loosen it.
Now listen, all those adjustments on those strings. Well, you got five senses, don't you? You got to tune those five senses. Touch, taste, see, smell here. If your taste buds are out of tune, you'll end up not being healthy. Hello? Your eyesight is out of tune. you end up looking at things that are completely against the will of God. You understand? Jesus was in perfect tune with the Father. Perfect, perfect. That means every song that Jesus sang was exactly right on. Have you ever <clears throat> watched people who thought they could sing? I, I, I never watched American Idol very much, but back four, five, six, seven years ago, I watched some of the programs, the tryout. Any of you ever watched the tryouts? And people would come, and they were amazed that these people thought they could sing. I mean, these people would sing up, and you'd have to put your fingers in your ears. But to them, they sounded beautiful. There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. And you know what? We're so deep in the forest, we can't, we can't see the trees. So a lot of times, even people who are not as spiritual as we are can see and hear where we are out of tune. Because they're standing out there in the audience while you're up here performing, while you're singing, they hear your song. You're singing a song wherever you go. You're making a melody. You're singing a song. Is it a song of love, a song of Christ, a song of life, a song of peace, a song of victory, a song of joy, a song of, 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 of dominion over the devil? Or what song are you singing? I, I, I don't know why. I, I, I heard one guy one time say, uh, sick, broken, broken, disgusted, and sad. Ever since I gave my heart to Jesus, I lost everything I had. He was mocking believers who are living in that realm. You, you know, it's like, woe with me. But that's not the song you're supposed to be singing. You're supposed to be singing a song of victory, a song of harmony, a song of oneness, a song of unity. And we're not singing it. Why? Christ lives in us, but we haven't been transformed by the renewing of our mind. That's why God gave us the word. That's why, God, that's why God sent his son, Jesus, not just to die and take our sins and our sicknesses and our diseases and rise again and defeat the devil. See, what he did on the cross and what he did in his death and his resurrection is not helping billions of people. Billions. Why? Because they don't agree with him. Matter of fact, this is a king in 2 Chronicles chapter 6, 16. And if you look there in verse 7, and at that time, Hananiah the Shear came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God. Now notice, this is, God wants us to bring into, and this is 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 7, you've not relied upon God. For instance, you're not in, har see, what does faith do? Faith brings me into harmony with God. Faith brings me into agreement with God. Faith brings me into oneness with God. When, when I'm in oneness with God, I will see, I will see it how God sees it. Uh, when, when, when Peter, I mean, when, when Paul and Silas were singing praises at midnight, God sent an earthquake. Whew. Why? It's because, have you ever seen these, these people who have the ability with their voices to actually hit a pitch that will break a wine glass? You ever see somebody do that? That, that audible note, that frequency. Did you know everything's held together with frequency? It's, it's, it's an amazing science if you ever study it. And frequencies, everything puts off a frequency. Did you know even rocks put off a frequency? Everything is moving. Every atom is moving. I had an amazing dream, and I hope to share it with you. I put it in our one book as I was finishing Horus of Hell, Splendors of Heaven. I had this most amazing, amazing dream 
about how God holds all of creation together with a song. It was amazing. But anyways, she hits that frequency and it shatters the glass because it hits that, listen, they hit that spiritual frequency of harmony with God and God shows up. L listen, did you know that almost all of nature teaches this principle? Do you know even the insect world, the reptile world, the animal world, and even the fish world, how they attract their mates? It's not all by colors. A lot of times it's audible. Frogs, crickets, birds. Huh? When I used to go turkey hunting, we'd, we'd take a turkey collar. When I used to hunt raccoons, we learned how to make the sound of a raccoon because we literally could call the raccoons to us. <laughs> they would hear their song and they would come running. I'm telling you right now that angels hear in the realm of the spirit. And when you begin to sing God's song, angels begin to come. Huh? Huh? Words, death and life is in a part of the tongue. Do you know when you sing certain kinds of songs, it puts out a fragrance? How I many know if I had roses, it draw bees, honeybees. If I had a pile of poop, it draw flies. Yes, it would. That frequency, that smell. Hello? Do you know that your words that are coming out of your heart will draw angelic beings or demonic powers? So if you got where there's envy and strife, there's confusion and every evil work. So if you're speaking words of death in your home and you don't say, you go, this is hell on earth. Yes, it is. You've just drawn all the devils to your house, and they're coming from miles around. And that's what the devil loves. He wants you to be out of harmony with God, because if you're out of sync with God, you're in his kingdom, because that's exactly what the devil did when he rose up against God. He got out of harmony with God. He was created to be an instrument of worship. He led the worship in the heavens, Lucifer did, and he began to play his own song, and he drew a third of the angelic host that said, I like your music better than I like God's music. And he drew... People don't understand really what's going on in this world right now. God is letting the devil play his music, and he is playing his music, and there is a dividing going on, even in the church. Yeah, I don't care. You know, you know how many, how, how many, do you know I have heard secular musicians say that they were in the will of God playing the music they played, and it was wicked and demonic. How in the world could that be? Because they are destined unto this damnation. Now, God didn't make them do it, just God knew they would do it. And we got false prophets play, playing music that is to the flesh. The flesh loves that sermon. The flesh loves that type of music. How many know your flesh loves certain kinds of music? Huh? But that don't mean it's good. You turn it off, how? You know the results of that music. What is that fruit? By their tree, by their fruits, you will know the tree. If that music is not producing the divine image and a likeness and a character of God, then it's not of God. But if it's producing love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control, and a such, against, such against there is no law, and they that are Christ, they that are in harmony with Christ, crucify the flesh with the affections and the lust thereof. Uh, you'll read about amazing miracles in our book, Living Around the Miraculous. I'm working on number two. Every time God showed up, I was in tune with God. I was, that's all it was. 
I was just simply in tune with God, with my words, my thoughts, my purpose of my heart, my desires, my attitude. It was in tune with God. That's when you get results to your prayers, when you're in tune with God. And what? How you think. Because what you believe is what you think and what you're going to say. We need to come in. And, but the devil is out to get me out of tune with God. So here he's speaking to uh, this king. And he, said, he says, uh, and at that time Hananiah the seer, prophets were in tune with God, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thine hand. For in words, you didn't get victory over your enemy. You could have defeated him, but you didn't, because you were not in sync with God. In verse 8, Were not the Ethiopians and the Lubims a huge host with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet, because thou didst what? Rely on the Lord, 2 Chronicles 16, verse 8. He delivered them into thine hand because you were in harmony with God. How about this? All things work together for good to them that call themselves Christians, that go to church. No, all things work together for good to them that what? Love God. Or you might say this way, they're in harmony with God. Because what you love is what you tune your life to. Huh? You tune yourself up. You listen, before I got born again, of course, he got saved. But uh, Johnny Carson was, was it Johnny Carson? No, no Johnny. He sang uh, uh, Orm, Orm's Blossom special, Johnny Cash. Yeah, you know, prison, blues. I used to sing his music. You wouldn't want to hear me sing it, but dressed all in black. He was one of my heroes. You know what? You tune yourself up to what you love. You better watch what you're loving. You'll become like it. But this man, Asa, was trusting and relying on God, and God showed up and delivered this mighty host into his hands, but here at a later date, he did not do it. He got out of tune with God. For the eye, now listen, verse 9, this, this has impacted my life for many, many years. This is, I, I pray this all the time. In verse 9, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Say the whole earth. Right now he's looking. Right now, what is he looking? To show himself strong. God says, I want to show myself strong. Where? In the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Now, the Hebrew literally says in harmony, in unity, in oneness. I'm looking for those who have taken their instruments of their lives, and you know what they've done? They've tuned themselves up to me. They're in tune. With, I'm looking for an instrument. Now, listen, I know somebody's got to play this guitar. Do you know what? Jesus said an amazing thing. He says, what I'm doing, it's not me. That's what walking in the Spirit is. It's not you. It's simply when you get in tune with God, He shows up to play your instrument. What do you think prophecy is? It says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it's profitable. And it says that, that men of old spake, as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Prophecy is not you deciding to say something. It is you're so in tune with God that God says, I found someone I can speak through. One time, God, you know, God can even speak through donkeys, can he? Spoke through a donkey to that prophet. See, that prophet, he was playing his own song. It was called the Song of Greed the song of money, the song of wealth. That king prophesied, said, if you'll prophesy over Israel, Balaam, he said, Balaam, if you'll prophesy over Israel, their destruction, because I know your words have power, I'll give you all this wealth. Man, he wanted that wealth. But the donkey didn't care about wealth. I'd rather be a donkey than that prophet. I want to be an instrument in tune with God. 
in harmony with God. How am I going to do that? He says the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro. His eyes are running right now saying, can I find, can I find anybody? You know, electricity takes the pathway of least resistance. Water takes the pathway of least resistance. God works the same way. God is looking for those of least resistance to his will. Least resistance. I'm not going to resist the Holy Ghost. Matter of fact, isn't that why they killed Stephen? He said, you stubborn people of heart, your forefathers did resist the Holy Ghost, and you are not resisting him. And they clenched their teeth and gnawed on their tongues, and they stoned him to death. Why? Because all he was trying to do was bring them back into harmony with God. Because that's where there's life. And life in abundance. Do, do I understand this? See, actually, I'm speaking to Mike Yeager this morning. Because I find myself getting out of tune with God easily. Very easily. And everything in this world we're des- that right now, right now. See, here's the thing that's really, really dangerous, though. Is that there's certain strings in our life where we're in tune, right? You might be in tune on your C, your A, your F, or your G, but your E is completely out of tune. And no matter how many godly people try to talk to you about the E chord, no, it's right. It's too high, it's too low. No, that's right, because God even told me, well, let me just take you to the scriptures. No, I already know. I already know that string is right. And it, you know what it does? That one string out of tune ruins the whole song. It ruins the whole song, brethren, sisters. That one string out of tune. Could be a 12-string guitar. Hey, some of these, the, the harpist I'm learning on, I think it's 26 strings. You got to tune 26 strings. Some of them have 50 strings or something like that. And you got to to play it. And David used to play the harp. Mary, I didn't want to play the harp. My mind said, oh, sissies play the harp. And the Lord spoke to me and said, David played the harp. I said, oh, that thought was out of tune, wasn't it? So I got to tune that up, man. If David played the harp, I don't know anybody who killed Goliath like he did and killed the Philistines and could, grabbed the lion and the bear by the... Well, I just won't play that song because it's sissified. So we got all kinds of strongholds in our mind. No, I didn't, I didn't realize it. I mean, I got born again. I began to get in tune with God right away. You know how I got in tune with God? I did it accidentally. I studied Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I think for the first three years of my walk with God, they were my favorite four books. They still are, and I didn't know it, but I was coming in a harmony with God. I was coming in tune with, with my words, didn't even know it, with my deeds, my thoughts, my actions, and God began to show up because I was playing the song that draws God to me. What do you think he means in the book of James about cleanse your hands, you sinners, purify your hearts, you double-minded, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and joy and to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He shall lift you up. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The word flee means to run in terror. You know why the devil doesn't leave us alone? He's not terrified of us because we get to playing the right music. I'm telling you, we play, we let God sing the right songs through us and it will drive the devil right out of people. It'll drive them out of people. It'll drive them out. It'll drive them out. But now we are living in a world where we are so bombarded by songs that are not of God. Come on, you think Hollywood is playing heavenly music? They're playing demonic music. And actually, the Bible prophesied in the book of Timothy, he said, for in the last days, my people will forsake the word of God and be turned on to fables. Fables, make-believe. Why? 
to keep you out of harmony with God. See, you're no threat to the devil as long as you allow him to tune your instrument. If you let the world, the flesh of the devil, tune the thoughts of the strings of your mind. Uh, we used to have a grand piano. We've had a couple of them. I don't know how many strings, on a, how many keys are on a piano. Anybody know? How many? 88 strings. And we used to have a piano tuner come in, an old guy, and he would tune it up. And I think he had a tuning fork. He'd, and he'd tune it up just perfect. And every key would hit the tune. Now, it was up to the one who would sit at the keyboard, but if you didn't have a tuned instrument, there's been times when my wife, she plays the piano, she can tell when it's out of tune. It don't bother me because it's not that bad. But she can't handle it. Listen, God is looking for somebody in tune with him. And he will show up. And you talk about a concert pianist. When God sits down on that piano bench and he begins to play your grand council, he begins to play, he begins to sing a song through you, the world will stand to attention. And they will go, what is that? That was the early church. Mighty signs and wonders. God showed up. Why doesn't God show up in my life? More often. Because your instrument is not in tune. And the devil is, right now, God is trying to tune you up. He's tweaking your strings. He's trying to move you into the realm of the spirit. He wants to bring you into oneness with him. Come on, Mike. Every day God's saying, I'm trying to, I've heard people say, I don't want to go anywhere where there's conviction. That's like saying, I don't want to go anywhere where God is going to begin to tighten my strings, tune me in. I don't want to go there. It makes me feel bad. No, no, it's not bad. It's a strain on the neck of this instrument. When that's tuned up the way it is, it does put a strain. In fact, this particular guitar has been ruined. It's cracked here, and it's got a bubble here. That means no matter how many times you tune it, it's going to lose it. It's going to lose it because it can't handle the pressure. The trying of your faith worketh endurance. Every time God begins to try to tune you up, you're right out the door. You run away from conviction. That's why people are running to places where no matter what music I play on my instrument, no matter how tuned, how out of tune I am, God loves me. God loves me no matter if I'm in tune or not. Is that really the question? Don't you want to be vessels meet for the master's use, prepared unto every good work you know it's amazing because uh i'll close here but the eyes of the lord's running well how does he do that well let's just look there and you can study it yourself in uh, uh, isaiah 55 isaiah 55 and i'll read that dream i had look there in verse 6 isaiah 55 seek ye the lord while he may be found because the day will be when you can't Call upon him while he is near. And, this, and, and I think it was Peter who said, the Lord's not very far from any of us. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will what? Abundantly pardon. Aren't you glad God will pardon? But listen to this now. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts and your thoughts. For us, the song I want to play through you is so far beyond this world, there's no comparison. The music I want to sing through you, the world can't even compete with it. Listen, the world could not compete with the early church. They couldn't compete by their love. They will know you are my disciples. They couldn't compete with that. They couldn't compete with raising the dead and cleansing the lepers, opening the eyes of the blind, not stopping the ears of the dead. Well, how come God did that? Because they were people 
who were in tune with God. Jesus had the Spirit without measure because he was in tune with God. Now, I'm not here to judge your instrument as you open your mouth, as you live your life, as you go about your daily business. I've I got to get in tune with God. I, I've got to get in tune with God. Aren't you in tune with God? Oh, I'm in tune with God to some extent, absolutely. Oh, yeah, I, I'm in tune with God in a lot of ways. Yes, I am, but, whoa, not near as in tune with God as what I need to be because when I get in tune with God, the more, I, the more in tune I get with God, the more the Holy Ghost has freedoms in me the more the Holy Ghost can do through me, the more the Holy Ghost can speak through me, the more I, and see, but the devil, the thief, the liar, the enemy of my soul, I'm convinced that's why Smith Wigglesworth read nothing but the Bible because he said, I'm not loving anything. And he lived in a day of Hitler and Stalin and Mussolini and, 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 and the Japanese and what they were doing, and yet he would not, allow himself to get out of tune with God. Whew. I am so convicted right now. <laughs> I feel the strings tightening. Oh, God. Tighten this one up. Tighten that one up. Tighten this one up. He said, if you'll tighten it, matter of fact, did you, can you tell the reality of Christ is becoming more real in this place as I'm speaking? How many of you sense that? God's getting excited. God's saying, I've been looking for a people that would be in harmony with me. But see, if you're not dead to self, when you walk out of here, you'll completely go out of tune. By the end of the day, you'll be so out of tune, you'll be questioning your salvation. <laughs> now listen. This is a guitar, period. You know, every human being is an instrument. Instrument of righteousness or an instrument on unrighteousness. Or a lukewarm instrument you can't really do anything with. Lukewarm people, you got to try, you God begins to try to tighten up the strings of their life and they rebel. I'm okay. I'm all right. I only treat you that way because you treat me that way. I only talk to you like that because you talk to me like that. I only do that because of, and see, the devil's going to always give you a thousand excuses, a million excuses why it's a guitar. Yes, it's a guitar. I'm born again. So what? So what? I'm so glad you're born again. But you're no threat to the devil just being born again. Matter of fact, you can be born again and the devil can play your instrument like you can't believe. But God tunes you up and the devil won't touch it. All of a sudden, God shows up and God says, I'm going to play your instrument. You're so in tune with me. You're so in harmony with me. Your soul, your soul, your mind, your words, your thoughts, your attitude, your motive. First of all, you've got to have a heart after God. That's what, remember, David had a heart after God. If you don't want to be in harmony with God, there's nothing God can do with you. Because even if you go and get tuned in a little bit, you'll lose it right away. Because that's not what you're about. That's not what you're about. Isn't it amazing how we got, we can criticize Christian artists. They play Christian music. You know, you can get albums of Elvis Presley singing wonderful Christian songs. I won't even listen to them. Because I'm not judging his heart but he was doing it for money to sell his albums. Now, if he would have gone, all oh, Christian, wow, let's go for it, Elvis, praise the Lord, but not, and I'm not picking on him, but don't we do that with our lives? 
We sing Christ on Sunday morning. And we'll sing the flesh through the week. <laughs> I'm talking to Mike Yeager, okay? I got to get all flesh out. I've, I've got to, I've just, I've just got to, my kids will tell you, I, the other day I, I got, the devil was hitting me physically in some areas, mentally. And <clears throat> it didn't take much for my flesh to rile up. My daughter said to me, Dad, will you stop yelling at us? I'm not yelling. Dad, you've been yelling at us all day. No, I haven't. You're exaggerating. How come you're always exaggerating? How many know Pastor Mike was not singing God's song? Well, God will forgive you. That's not the... First of all, I'm doing damage. Because when I'm out of tune, people who are not spiritual, you'll get them out of tune real quick. It says, take heed lest a, a, a spirit of bitterness enters into you and many, many be defiled. My thoughts are not your thoughts. For as the heavens are higher than your soul, my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts and your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and stone from heaven returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper into, in, in the thing where I, where to I send it. Now, what, I, what he's saying is this. You know how we get in tune? Hide the word of God in your heart. Hide the word of God in your heart. Be a doer of the word and not a hearer only deceiving yourselves. Hide the word of God in your heart. That it's, it's, and the devil and all the demons and everything is going to fight you from doing that. And it's not just putting the word of God in your heart. Then you've got to stop putting things in your heart that's going to take you out of harmony with God. People begin to gossip. People begin to speak evil to you about others. You can't stop them, but don't listen. Listen, I, I, honestly, I'm telling you, the enemy is doing everything he can to get Mike Yeager out of harmony with God. He, he, he wants me not only to get a harmony with God. See, I, I, there's areas in my life I'm in tune with God. I'm in tune with God. Not perfect tune, but I'm in tune with God. He wants to get those areas of my life out of tune with God, and then he wants to even get, get de destroy what harmony I do have with God, and he definitely doesn't want me to get more in sync with God, more in harmony with God, more in line with God, because then I'll become a greater threat to him. Then people will hear the voice of God. Paul said, when I came unto you, you received me not as a man, but as Christ Jesus himself. What? He said, I was so in harmony with God, if I would have told you I was Jesus, you would have believed me. Can we come? Can we really get in that tune with God, Brother Mark? Can we? Jeremy, can we? Yes, we can. See, my, my job is not to criticize, find fault, condemn, stone people, attack them. My job is to be an instrument, meet for the master's use. In, in a great house there are instruments of gold and of silver and of wood and of earth and some to honor, some to dishonor. But if a man will purge himself of these things, he shall be a vessel unto honor, meet for the master's Use prepared on every good work. I need to get in harmony. Now don't look so depressed. It's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah, but you don't understand how much of a mess I am. I don't need to, thank God. But God, he can take you because you were made to be in harmony with God. You were made to be in harmony with God. Back in We'll close here. It's, it's in our book, and you can go back there and just read it without buying the book. But I was finished with this book, Horrors of Hell, Splendors of Heaven. And one night I went to bed. I also will say this. I think a lot of times the amount of dreams and visions you have will be dependent upon how much in tune you are with God. I believe the supernatural experiences you have 
will be dependent upon how much you are in tune with God. I'm not seeking experiences. Don't ever seek experiences, but you will have them. You will have them. And I, and, and I wrote in this book, as we close, I had an amazing dream recently. It's very hard to describe in hum, human vernacular. I was sleeping peacefully when at about 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't know why God always visits me about 3 in the morning. I was suddenly smack dab in the middle of heaven, close to the throne of God. This really happened to me. I mean, I'm sleeping, all of a sudden, I am in heaven. It was so real and tangible, it literally felt as if I was in heaven physically. God gave me eyes, and I can't I can explain this to you, to see all of existence. It was if, as if I was omnipresent. All of creation lay before me. My mind, emotions, and all my five senses perceived all things. And at the same time, I was embracing everything. It was the most amazing experience you could imagine. It was so beautiful and magnificent that it is about beyond description. It could be lit, literally linked to being like in the eye of a storm with everything spinning around you. So I, I'm like in this eye of this humongous hurricane or tornado, and yet I see every, it's spinning, but I, I, I recognize everything that's going on. With this supernatural imparted ability, I could perceive the spiritual angelic. I saw angels of all types and ranks. I saw and felt nature the natural and the physical realms. I saw the planets, the moons, the stars, the solar systems, the whole universe. I saw animal life, plant life, oceans, seas, lakes, and rivers. I even saw the microscopic molecular realm. God supernaturally expanded my capacity, ment mentally, my capacity mentally and emotionally to perceive all things. If it had not happened to me personally, I would be skeptical myself of someone saying this kind of stuff or these things. This happened to me. In the midst of this experience, I began to be overtaken by an absolute sense of incredible harmony, complete harmony. There was a unity and a oneness of a, of a mind-boggling proportion. It resonated through my whole being. I could feel it in my bones, my flesh, my emotions, and my mind. My heart resonated with this amazing harmony. My whole being was caught in this unbelievable symphony. All of creation, the universe, and the spiritual realm was in complete and total harmony and unity. Instantly, I perceived everything was at one with God. All of creation was one with God. Not one molecule, not one atom or proton was out of sync with God. As I was looking at creation, suddenly I perceived an invisible force permeating and saturating all of it. God literally gave me eyes to see this invisible force. I could see it moving and flowing and penetrating everything. With, with, with this ability to see, he also gave me spiritual understanding. I realized at that moment that it was this incredible, invisible force which was causing all things to exist and flow and move as one living, breathing creation. Have you ever walked out in the parking lot and it was so hot, you saw the, the, the invisible heat waves? That's what it was like. I was, saw, I was seeing this invisible force. What I am sharing with you was a progressive revelation unfolding before me like a flower blossoming. In the midst of this experience, my ears, now listen, my ears opened up and I heard the most incredible music, a breathtaking song. I heard this amazing song. I can't even express it to you. This invisible force was literally a song that was being sung. Instantly, I perceived that it was this music, this song, which was holding all of creation together. This song was permeating every animate and inanimate thing together. Not only was it holding everything together, but also everything was singing along with it. It was the most incredible music and song you could ever imagine. Actually, it is beyond comprehension or human ability to describe this song and what it was doing. All of creation was being upheld and kept together by this song. I could feel it and see it. It was inside of me. I was a part of this song. No maestro, psalmist, no 
Beethoven or Mozart could ever produce such a majestic masterpiece. As I watched and listened, I was overwhelmed with the reality that it was this song that was causing everything to be in harmony and unity. It was this song causing everything to live, to move, to exist, and have its being. During this experience, a curiosity took a hold of me, and I began to wonder, where is this music, this song coming from? I began to look high and low, trying to discover where this song, which was permeating me, was coming from. I finally looked behind me, and on a higher elevation, I saw God sitting upon his throne. I did. I saw him. I did not see the clarity of God's former face. He was covered in a glistening mist, something like fog. It was a brilliant fog. But as I looked upon his form, it was as if my eyes zoomed in on his mouth. I was looking intently at the mouth of God, and out of his mouth was coming this amazing, beautiful, awesome song. Then you say, Pastor Mike, is this literal? I don't know. This song was coming out of the mouth of God himself. This song that God was singing was holding everything together in perfect harmony. God the Father was making everything one with himself through this song, this music coming out of his mouth. That's why music is so powerful. Music is so powerful. We will, throughout eternity, be singing. I wouldn't be surprised if our heavenly vocabulary is singing. Have you ever watched those old movies where it's all singing? Every, I don't know what they call it. Everybody's singing. It says, I, and, and out of his mouth, I could literally see, feel, and experience the song coming out of God's mouth. In my heart, I said to the Father, Father, how long will you sing this song? And he spoke to me in my heart. And this is what he said. Throughout eternity, my voice will never cease to sing. My voice will never cease to be heard. Now, as I'm watching him sing this song, I could literally see letters streaming from God's mouth. Words were coming from his mouth. They were swimming in a river of transparent light, like fish swimming in a river. This is what I saw. Words swimming like living creatures in that river of the song coming out of his mouth. These words seemed to be alive. They were spreading throughout the entire universe, causing everything to exist and to be in harmony. They were permeating all of creation, visible and invisible, spiritual and natural. I knew in my heart that this was the word of God, the divinely inspired scriptures. The word was swimming as if in an invisible, transparent river. I knew that this river was a living, living, quickening force. I knew that it was this river which was causing the word of God to be alive. The word of God was being carried forth by this river. I said to the Father, this is what I said in this dream, Father, what is this river that the word is flowing, swimming, and living in? And he said to my heart, it is the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Ghost. I was stunned into silence. After a while, I repeated my question. Once again, he said to me, it is the Holy Ghost. It is the breath of my mouth coming from the voice of my lips. And this is what he said to me. And this voice is my son, Jesus Christ. The voice of the Father is the Son. My voice is my son, Jesus Christ, and out of his voice comes the Holy Ghost and my word. Further, he said to me, my word would not sustain, heal, deliver, or bring life unless it is quickened and made alive by my spirit. Then the Father confirmed this to me by quoting the scripture where Jesus said, my words are spirit and they are life. The Father spoke to me again and said, you can be dead and you can quote, memorize, declare the whole Bible, but it will be dead and lifeless until you yield, surrender, move, flow, and come into complete harmony with the Word of God and the Holy Ghost. I believe, to some extent, this reveals God's eternal purpose for you and I to be in complete oneness and harmony with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost throughout eternity. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout.
And this is the fight we're fighting. The devil does not want you to be in harmony with God. Because nothing will be able to stand against you. Nothing will be able to hinder you. When you come into harmony with God, with all the strings of your life, How many years is God going to tune me, Pastor Mike, until the day you die? Paul said, I have not yet apprehended that for which I've been apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting what's behind me. You can't change what you've already done. Now, there is a restitution. If you stole something yesterday, you should return it or make it right. I'm not saying there's no restitution. What I'm saying, if you've attacked somebody, if you've degraded, degraded somebody, if you have accused people in the, spirit, in the spirit of the devil, you need to repent and you need to tell them you're sorry. That's the first place to get in tune. That if you've done evil to somebody, you need to go out of your way and make it right. Hello? And then look, and then you're beginning to get in tune with God. Get in tune with God. Now, now I, 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 I realize something. Every, every, every day of my life, I get up in the morning and I say, Lord, I, I want to be more in tune with you today, more than I ever have before. But uh, uh, tragically, many times through the end of the day, I find myself completely out of tune with God. Something happened. Something took place. Got caught up in Mickey Mouse stuff. Got to retune. Got to retune. Well, that's a part of a musician's life. But you know what? I want to, I want to, I, I will know when I'm in tune with God because the results will be evident in my life. Now, don't get excited over a little bit of good results. You get a little bit of answered prayer. You get a little bit of, uh, of manifestations. No, that's wonderful. But that ought to excite you and say, oh, there's a, lot, a, whole more, a whole lot more than that out there. There's no and. Listen, there's no and to what God would do in my life the more I get in tune with him. You know, we have what we call serious, serious, we're closing up here. We got people who are serious musicians, and then we got people who they can play. And they might even play to where people will listen to them. But then you got people who are, you go on YouTube. I, I, I do. I like to watch some of these musicians on YouTube, street performers. I go, whoa. Wow! Well, you know what? I guarantee they have got to be committed musicians. We need to be committed musicians. We need to let God sing and play through us. Amen. Father, I thank you now that your word will not return void, that even by your spirit and by your word, that right now you're trying to tune, tune us up, tune us in trying to tighten those strings. Some strings were too tight, and you're trying to loosen them. Those strings that are too tight, it's legalism. You want to loosen those strings. You want to bring them in harmony with you. So, Lord, we pray that you would tune us according to the instrument that you've given us, and his name is Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name.